British Sovereign Island by Murdoch Mackenzie. Case 1. If the island has several conspicuous hills in it, first measure a baseline on a plane, or by two latitudes. On that baseline, form a stasymmetric scheme of points, survey and delineate the coast of the island as directed for a harbour. Case 2. If the island is but a few miles long and has but one remarkable hill or object in it, which may be seen for a mile or for most parts of the coast, find the distance of any of the points or heads in the island, suppose B, from A, add B, take the magnetic bearing of A, in degrees and parts of a degree. Lay down that distance on a paper according to the bearing being a bearing observed and draw black lead lines all over the paper, parallel and perpendicular to the magnetic meridian, about an inch for one another. Add V with the other light or Hadley's quadrant, tack the angles O A B C and A B F. Write them down first in your field book and then draw them out from point B. Also, tack the bearing O A and B by the needle. Judge their distances for B. Draw them and sketch the curve of the course between you and them. Then go to C. There, tack the angles A, C, B, A, C, D. Write them down. Add A, B, C and A, C, B together. Subtract their sum for 180 degrees and the remainder will be the angle of B, A, C. Draw that angle from the point A and it will intersect the side B, C at the point of station C. At C, tack the bearing of A, and that will intersect its former bearing for B, in the corrected place of A. Then sketch the curvature between C and B and pencil it. Next, draw the angle ACD at D. Tack the angles A, D, C, A, D, E. The former added to A, C, D, and subtracted for 180 degrees will leave the angle C, A, D. Draw that angle and it will intersect the side C, D with the station D. Sketch and pencil the curve between C and D. Then draw the angle A, D, E and the bearing D. Fix the point E by the angle D and finish the bay between D and E as a four. Go on this way from point to point round the island till the whole is finished, remembering to insert remarkable cliffs, houses or other objects at each station. If at any point, as G or H, A cannot be seen, tap the directional A for that point by setting two poles exactly in a line between them and tap the angle between one of the poles and the other visible object. By such procedure as this, the circumference of any island will be found to meet on paper without arbitrary alterations. When an island is small and great exactness unnecessary, if the first distance or baseline is true and long enough, 
all the other distances may be got sufficiently exact by intersections or good needle without any other instrument to tack the angles. When one side or part of the island is delineated on the paper, then find the distance and dimensions of several rocks, sandbanks, shoals and ledges along it. Fund the depth of the water towards and round each of them and tack leading marks on them and landmarks for avoiding them. Fund also along each part of the coast after it is delineated, as near the shore as vessels can or ought to fail. And when the whole coast is finished, fund around it a mile or more for the land. Who to proceed in surveying a large cluster of islands by Murdoch Mackenzie. Pitch on two remarkable tapering hills, rocks or other objects at a competent distance as A and B, as near north or south of each other as you can. And if a line connecting them runs about the middle of the cluster, it is better. Find the distance of A and B either by measuring a straight line on a plane or by their latitudes and mark that the baseline. Select amongst the other islands one or more remarkable objects on each side of the baseline as C and D of these forms and verify the stasymmetric scheme. With this scheme, go to one of the islands and find the distance of the two proper perps or points in it. Mark that a baseline for surveying head. Do the same for each island, funding the channels between them and observing the setting and strength of the several streams of tide as you pass and repass, taking notes of all and inserting them into the draft at the time they are observed. When all the islands are surveyed and channels funded, and every necessary particular is inserted into the raft, then sail round the hull, between four and ten leagues for the land, and find the depth at the distance, and draw views of the land as you sail.